Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. Within the Royal Family, loyalty has long been a battleground of power, reputation, and survival. In a major change of allegiance, Princess Beatrice, who was once considered one of the last pillars of support for her embattled father Prince Andrew Beatrice, who has spent years defending Andrew amid his fall from grace, has reportedly conceded that things need to change. Beatrice has now decided to throw in her lot with the new king, King Charles in order to protect her future and that of her burgeoning family. Gone are the days of clinging to her father's compromised legacy. Survival in the royal pecking order requires looking forward, and with her family growing, Beatrice knows what she needs to do. It's not a matter of preference, but strategy. Beatrice, at 36, has now moved her allegiance over to the one person who can provide for Beatrice's place in the monarchy for decades. She is reported to be pregnant with another child, reminding us of the future once again for her and her family in the royal order. And if Beatrice had been uncertain of that fact, then her decision to ostracize her father, now little more than a first Earl of Wessex footnote in the royal family, should serve as an even clearer signal. Loyalty has its place, but it can only go so far when one's future is at risk. That practical approach reveals her awareness of the new reality facing the family. However, to put this in perspective, Beatrice was one of the very few royals who backed Andrew at first when allegations surrounding his involvement with the Epstein scandal were first conceived. But the world has shifted and so too has Beatrice's fidelity. Her decision to be with King Charles is essentially breach from the future rather than the past, and it secures her a safe passage ahead for herself as well as her family. When the royal family faced an avalanche of trouble, Princess Beatrice stood by her father Prince Andrew and couldn't be moved even when it seemed that was the night everything fell apart. But months into the program, she has hit a painful, bitter realization, loyalty to Andrew is no longer an option. Everything that matters to him is irreparably damaged, his reputation, his wealth and also the place he occupied in the royal family, reduced now to nothing. Beatrice knows her future cannot be shackled to a sinking ship with Andrew cut off from royal funds. Now having to pick up the pieces of her father's shame, she has chosen the sensible route, its future not his past. This has led Beatrice to make a real play for her allegiance with her uncle, King Charles. But according to insiders, Beatrice has made this move to protect her family's future, believing that Charles is working hard to restore the monarchy in the wake of Andrew's scandals. The choice should simply be a personal and financial one for Beatrice. Beatrice is conscious that, despite marrying an Italian aristocrat, her family's security relies on the goodwill between royals. Andrew no longer has the monarchy backing him financially, and a paler shadow it seems than before, so Beatrice's position even remains precarious. The futures of her daughter, Sienna, and her unborn child here will depend on how she walks a moving royal tightrope. Desperate for her last foothold of the royalty ship to survive, Beatrice has fled into the grasping arms of monarch Charles who is all that remains from what was decimated amidst marrying money as royal be gone. In addition, it is clear that Beatrice also has her own private reasons for this pivotal reorienting. This is not so much about guaranteeing her children a future but rather Princess Beatrice advancing her own place in the monarchy. However, Beatrice has been in hot pursuit of simply royal-tinged notice despite marrying into a prominent aristocratic family. Desire to be officially included on the royal list has forced her into the painful decision, cut yourself off from your father. An insider said, Beatrice's main objective is clear, to be seen as a useful asset to King Charles and the royal family at any price. And if that means leaving behind her scandal-ridden father and aligning herself with the king, who controls the myriad coffers of gold, so be it. It is quite ironic for her to be doing this. Beatrice has successfully turned against her own father, the man who stood behind a bush and protected her from the press. Andrew's sleazy fallout has come on like a freight train, and Beatrice knows that you cannot survive ever so long in the madness of monarchy. We might ask whether Andrew has even noticed Beatrice changing her tune, 
or if he is too busy worrying about his own problems to care. With Beatrice pushing to cement her foothold in court, it seems almost poetic that she now faces the truth that blood isn't always thicker than monarchal necessity. It signals the beginning of a new era for the royal family and also an end to everything Andrew. Her decision to throw her total support behind King Charles. It also underlines the inevitable dimming of the power and presence of the Duke of York in the cold, hard world of royal politics. It's a game of survivor, and Princess Beatrice has picked right. That niggling question still remains, will Andrew ever come back from the devastation he has wrought? What does this mean for his daughters, who are now forced to deal with the fallout of their father's disgrace? What is for sure, Beatrice has taken her precautions to protect her future while Andrew clings on the remnant of a past that had already forgotten him. As the royal family move on, Andrew becomes a remnant of another age. Such a dramatic realization, however, is not only one chapter in the saga that has beset the royal family but rather suggests a holdover of many more chapters to come as cold and calculated form of decisions beget conjectures about survival. In short, Beatrice has made her choice and it's not with her father who is buried in scandal. The changing loyalties within the royal family make for a story that will continue to unfold far beyond its most recent chapter. Royalty tale drama lives on, each scandal more outrageous than the one before. Meanwhile, Beatrice has pulled off the ultimate power move. Having been the dutiful daughter, she has finally realized this thing, in order to have a future, her only choice is to cut all ties with her father and cozy up to the one family member who actually matters, King Charles. Beatrice making this realization is some sort of poetic irony. She defended her father through some of his most public scandals and remained by his side for decades. However, as Prince Andrew's myriad and ongoing scandals inflict permanent damage on the royal family's brand, Beatrice has accepted a bitter reality. Loyalty goes only so far and often it is not much further than one's face when your own survival within the institution of monarchy is at stake. Of course, Beatrice supporting Andrew is a tragic error, but we all make mistakes, and the rest of us pay far less public repercussions than others. She was wrong because she aligned herself with a man whose past is filled with misconduct and whose name will always be connected to malfeasance, regardless of how badly he might want to wish it away. What was always evident that Andrew's foibles were not just a personal tragedy, but also a burden to anyone attached to him. The cold truth has finally dawned on Beatrice, the royal family's most zealous loyalist. And when your father is dead weight, you bail. Same, but sadistic, yet still needed. So, what inspired Beatrice to change allegiance to King Charles? A moment of realization. Maybe she saw that if she didn't step in line with the monarch, she'd be sidelined watching her royal cousins on the way up when she fade down into obscurity. It almost feels like Beatrice had always been there playing a long game and waiting for an opportunity in the family firm. The second time she fell pregnant around the same moment. Beatrice knew her family would not gamble their future on a sinking ship that is Andrew. But this transformation was not only the move against her father embarrassing her, it was ensuring that whatever mess Andrew had left behind would not follow to haunt her children. Because, really, no royal wants to be connected to someone whose name itself has become a synonym for scandal. Beatrice has moved on and realized that a well-functioning monarchy is the only way to go rather than following blindly. And therein lies the crueler fact of royal life, that to survive it can require a certain degree of ruthless bell jar pragmatism. When survival is on the line pragmatism will always trump sentimentality. In such situations, loyalty turns a rare pleasure. This is hardly an off-the-cuff moment for Beatrice as she plans to keep her distance from Andrew. Everything is all but settled as she has played her cards wisely, understanding that even if his family might hold the tattered shreds of a connection to him in their trembling hands, the rest of this world got out and away with referee whistle clarity. For the monarchy to survive, it must evolve, and Beatrice knows that you have to go with whichever direction the winds of power blow. This choice keeps her in an ever-evolving story. BEA's plate is full with all the drama her father left behind. Yet the underlying tragedy of Andrew's case looms large. 
to watch that once promising royal come crashing down in flames, so astoundingly, his own daughter cannot support him anymore, is a bitter spectacle. Despite all of his shortcomings, Andrew has always had a very clear but misdirected sense of smug entitlement. He believed, like so many others on my list that came before him and who will come after him, that his royal lineage and heritage would entitle him to immunity from consequences. He thought that the privileges of his birthright would shield him from scandal. Now, though, here we all are, Andrew's image lies in ruins and his royal position a sideshow. What was once a life full of promise now faces decades of fallout from a scandal that will never go away. So, it seems the best way for them is for Beatrice, his own daughter, to stop talking to his ass period. Yo cannot pretend any longer with you own blood openly associated with shame. The most scandalous part, though? Andrew's reply. It is simply incredible how he remains adamant that this situation in which he finds himself is not serious. And so Andrew, despite the destruction of his royal future unfold literally before his eyes, continues to believe he can sweet-talk his way back into public life with some hey look at me, trickery and a smile and wink over the wreckage. He appears completely lost in the realization that his legacy is forever tainted and that all may be said and done in terms of the royal family and public moving on. This denial of the depth of his abyss is part of what makes Andrew such a tragic character. He holds on to the last threads of his earlier days, unaware that all around him life has moved forward and left him behind. But Beatrice has come to that conclusion quickly. She knows that getting off this sinking ship is the only way to save herself, or she will be dragged down with him. Do keep in mind that Beatrice's pivot isn't merely about loyalty or a desire to maintain the integrity of the monarchy. It's a power play, plain and simple. Far from naive, Beatrice she is breaking ties with Andrew and making herself a logical ally of King Charles, which in stain makes her available for real position within the future of the monarchy that has now been shepherded by Charles. It has always been about more than titles and tradition for Beatrice. This is about pulling strings and gaining an advantage by being right place right time. And with Charles now at the head of the house, Beatrice is well aware that her best chance of securing her future, and that of her family, is to move with the times and leave all things Andrew behind. Some critics might brand her as calculating or cynical, but Beatrice is merely doing what the royal family has always needed, playing the game with chill pragmatism and a steady focus on survival. There is no real emotional allegiance to the royals. The monarchy does not hand out loyalty, you have to earn it, and Princess Beatrice has discovered that her father cannot offer what she really wants anymore. This hardest of hard lessons, almost as old as the monarchy itself, loyalty is a commodity, and when it depreciates, time to put your money on something with better growth potential. Now what we have is a wily royal figuring out a game of high-stakes survival. Though Beatrice did mess up at first by siding with her father, she has made amends on that front. Instead, she has been forward-thinking because her future is with King Charles, not cleaning up the mess of her disgraced father. In doing so, she has forged a more secure, lucrative and aligned path with the new story of the monarchy. Beatrice is pivoting into the history. Her decision to cut ties with the past and embrace the new royal order has ensured herself and her children a brighter future. The rest of Andrew appears to fit a plan for anonymity, resentment, and lost possibilities. In a way to keep herself out of her father's downfall, if it were to happen again, Beatrice has been careful in navigating. Maintaining its role as a never-ending soap opera, the twists just keep getting stranger with the royal family. Once the perfect embodiment of royal misdemeanor for his dubious association with sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein, it seems that Prince Andrew remains a headline-grabbing figure. The family is rocked by his disgrace, and Beatrice's choice to cut herself off from him is by far one of the most calculated moves, image, Netflix her response to this? To everyone who thought Beatrice would stick by her father amid his continuing scandals, this behavior speaks for itself. Beatrice now knows her place in the family all depends on where she sits with arguably the most powerful player at the top table of royal musical chairs, King Charles himself. Beatrice, 
formerly loyal to the point of denial daughter in refusing to even consider the accusations against Andrew, clearly has found acceptance. She is not going to spend the rest of her life with the man who has single-handedly tarnished his name and brought disgrace upon the family. Now 36, Beatrice, with another child on the way, has pledged her allegiance to King Charles and a new chapter of the monarchy. Those days of Beatrice the naive royal are over. However, she is far too shrewd to keep hitching her future with the royal family to the ever more disastrous path of Andrew. Looking back it feels almost ridiculous that she ever thought he was on a path to anything other than scandal and tragedy. Oprah trashing Andrew and all the royals at once has left a mighty path of destruction in its wake. What appeared to be her fidelity to her father quickly transformed into a FB cover phototype scramble save for herself. Today Beatrice looks to the same monarchy that her father reaped splinters in with every miscalculation he made from an extramarital affair to a disastrous BBC interview. There is nothing off the cuff about her pivot, and yet, in a way, it was inevitable. Like anyone with half a brain recognizes, her future, the stability of her family and her children's prospects all depend on the goodwill of King Charles. This is a tough but realistic vote, and really, who can blame her? What was her alternative, stay with Andrew while he compounded the family's problems by being a royal? Or forge her own path by rejecting the very institution that provides security? At last realizing the life Beatrice leads, the life he thought she was dead to. Whether you consider her pragmatism and admiration or simply opportunism, their partnership shows the cynical maneuvers necessary for survival in the royal family. This marks a decisive break from the blind loyalty she professed to Andrew, indicating her new priorities. Maybe she has come to terms with the fact that loyalty will always be after self-preservation in the royal family. Now, before anyone mistakes this for some act of virtue, understand, this is simply strategy for survival. Beatrice might come off as the noble bard, but she has been playing her cards like a true pro. Can't blame her for knowing where her future is. And as she separates herself further from a cautionary tale of financial ruin and public shame starring Andrew, the question lingers, what else is Beatrice prepared to give up to cement her place in the royal family? Does this mean she still plans to defer to King Charles and the monarchy, or will she carve out her own identity once things settle with her father's scandal? Only time will tell, but one thing is clear, Beatrice isn't the dutiful daughter that she used to be. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.